What is going on everybody? Welcome back, MTG here with another episode. If you're new to the channel, hi there. So the Samsung Galaxy S24, I've had it for about two months later and I wanna share with you guys my opinions, my thoughts and my experience of using this device. Now, here's the thing. My opinions and my thoughts may differ from yours and that's perfectly okay. Or you may share the same thoughts and the same experiences as me with using the Galaxy S24. But right off the bat, I want to say that this is a new compact flagship phone. And I say that because Asus Zenfone 10, yes, while this did come out last year and the S24 came out in 2024, it doesn't look like we're getting an Asus Zenfone 11. We got the 11 Ultra, Asus released that, but there's no signs of a smaller Asus Zenfone 11. So Asus might ha have finally killed off their compact flagship smartphone. So this is next. And if you look at it side by side, they really share a similar size. So I truly think this is like the next compact smartphone, like flagship smartphone. You may differ, you may agree, that's perfectly okay. But here's what I got to say. I just love this design. I love this design more than the S24 Ultra because of its flatter design around the sides as well. It's just more refined, it feels much better. It, many call it an iPhone, the iPhone of Android, and I, I see why they say that, but I really like it. I really do like how it feels in the hand. It has Gorilla Glass, uh, it doesn't have an S Pen, it has a 6.2 inch, AMOLED display on the front, a 120 hertz refresh rate, and this display is really thin, like thin bezels and uh, symmetrical bezels as well, and you'll really enjoy it. Like 6.2 inches of display is actually a pretty large display, but in a compact form factor because of those thin bezels, it's awesome. Uh, just the overall feel of it, it's really light to use. I like how the camera, the front facing camera is centered uh, on the display. Some have it in the corner, which is kind of annoying. Like even Z Asus Zenfone 10, which I love this smartphone, it has its front facing camera in the top left of the phone on the display. I, I like it in the center. I think that's how it should be. We got clicking buttons, USB-C, we got a speaker port. Uh, we got our SIM tray right here on the bottom. We got nothing on the left and we get some mics right on the top. But overall, I think you'll like this design, especially if you use a Samsung device before, you'll really come to like this. And we're hearing S25 series is gonna have some drastic changes in design, but if it ain't broke, then there's no need to really fix it or change it. And I, I think that's what Samsung has been going for for the past you know, couple years. Uh, so good job on the design department. Now, performance, we're gonna, we're gonna get into performance because it's really good. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip, eight gigs of RAM, uh, and you get 128 or 256 gigs of storage. Android 14 with One UI 6.1 out of the box, seven years of software updates. It's magical, like day-to-day -day use has been awesome. I've had no hiccups, no stutters, no issues whatsoever. And for me, I'm using this device for YouTube videos. I'm using it to browse the web for social media, uh, for calling, texting, keeping in touch with uh, my friends and family. And it's been awesome. I've had no complaints uh, with calls. Some do ask about calls. How is the calling on it? I've had no complaints from my end and from the other end. Uh, it's just been really kind of HD call. It's been really good. Uh, with the AI features, that's one of the things that Samsung has been pushing with S24 series Galaxy AI. I'll be honest with you. I haven't used, actually, the only thing I've probably used is just for like uh, editing photos. Um, I mainly actually use more of the object eraser, uh, but that's really it. I'm not using any of those ed extra AI features. They're nice to have, but I, I just wasn't, and I still am not reaching towards them at all. And for those who do ask or do comment, oh, his SIM card is currently not in here. Yes, it's not because I literally have the Galaxy A55 that dropped in the studio. Um, so that it's going in there. Uh, I'm, I have the Asus Zenfone 10 video is coming on that. I still have the S24 Ultra that I'm still going through a uh, testing as well. I, I've got so many different devices lined up and it, it just adds up. So like I'm, I'm really quickly switching SIM cards between devices. Um, so if you see where it says like, oh, emergency calls only just, just putting it out there just so you guys know. Uh, but nonetheless, I think you'll be fine with performance and with software. I have 
and I can easily recommend this to a lot of people who are looking for that good performance and that good uh, software experience. Cameras also have been really good. It's got a triple camera setup. They've performed really well in the past two months that I've been using it. Now it doesn't have the 100X zoom, uh, but if you don't need that, I think you're all set with the cameras on the Galaxy S24. Uh, and here's where I'm gonna say, this device is pretty much offering 80, 85% of what the Galaxy S24 Ultra is providing. Uh, and if you don't need those extra like 15%, like the 100X zoom or the larger display or the S Pen, this is going to be that device for you. And also just to add on top video, performance is also really good on the S24. Um, and for those who are wondering what case this is, this is the, I believe it's the Banks. I'm trying to remember the exact name off the top of my MagClap uh, Armor Pro case. And I love this case. Why? Because I'm gonna put it on for you guys real quickly. Um, but first of all, it still provides the clicky buttons. Um, it It's a really protective case too. It's not too thick. Uh, it has a lip right here for the camera. And not only that, it's MagSafe compatible. And if you just pop it out, I'll show you guys right here. Uh, pop it out and you get right here, the magnets for MagSafe. It's awesome. Like you can kind of, it kind of already claps on or sticks right there with the magnet. But I've been using this case uh, rigorously and pretty much religiously for this device since its release. And I love this. I can easily recommend this case. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below. I believe you can still get 10% uh, off if you use my code. Again, links are in the description down below. But I wanna talk about the charging and the battery on this. The charging isn't the fastest, 25 watts charging. We already know that. Uh, and in the past two months, I've gotten used to it because like, you know what? I'm just gonna charge it overnight and I'm all set to go. It's got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, which is all right for this device like it's not the greatest battery capacity it's not the largest but it's also not the best in performance either i'm still getting pretty decent though four to five hours of screen on time when i really push it and i'm a heavy user so while this may not last me the entire day that's perfectly okay uh, i'm at a point where in my day i have a charger with me uh, in my bag so if i do need to charge it up i'm all set i can use my magsafe charger to charge this up like I'm all set to go with chargers. Like my, my Tesla has a wireless charger. Again, I'm all set to go in my car. When I get home, I have chargers around uh, my, my desk where I do my work, uh, where I'm literally recording this. I have some chargers uh, where you can't see right here. Uh, so literally even by my bedside uh, or in my bedroom, I do have chargers. So I'm all set to go in that aspect. I don't need to worry about you know having my phone die out to 0% unless I go on like a weekend trip or something and forget my chargers. Then that's a problem. I'm just probably not gonna use my phone. Uh, but for a light user, I think you'll be fine. I honestly think you'll be fine. If you're just gonna use this for like just occasional calling and texting and hearing that, you should be perfectly fine. And I wanna quickly talk about the pricing because while the pricing is starting at $799, and it's priced competitively against the iPhone 15, this device is always going on sale. That's why I leave links in the description down below because you never know, Samsung just might throw a sale and say, hey, S24 is now $699 or $150 off and make it like $549, you never know. So that's why I tell you guys, if you want to check out any device, definitely check in the links in the description down below. Of course, they are affiliates, so do keep that in mind, and they really do help out the channel out a lot. But don't go and pick up the S24 for its base price at $799, because what usually happens, and I've come across this in real life experiences and hearing stories from others, is they went and bought the latest device in person um, at the base price too, and then a couple days, in a matter of days, the, the phone went on sale and they were pretty bummed out because they already made the purchase and whatnot. And so that's why it's always good, especially with Samsung, to just pay attention to the market and see when a device goes on sale. And I'll be leaving uh, community tabs. If you follow, if you're subscribed to the channel, you see my community posts here and there. I will put up uh, posts about Galaxy devices and other devices that do go on sale. So don't miss out on that. But uh, just my overall thoughts about this device two months later. It's pretty much the same from last month. Uh, really nothing has changed. It's awesome. I love it. In fact, I kind of like this more than the Galaxy S24 Ultra. 
Like I'm going and picking up this device more than I am for it with the S24 Ultra. Um, and I, I still think this is probably the best compact smartphone to come on 2024. Not, not only that, not just the best compact, but like the best compact flagship phone. Yeah, it doesn't have 12 gigs of RAM. It doesn't have the large battery. Like that's okay, but for the size, it's still carrying flagship specs with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor, a really good display, really good cameras. Uh, but here's the thing, now that Asus released the Zenfone 11 Ultra and not a Zenfone 11, a smaller one, I, I truly believe that this is the new compact flagship smartphone of 2024. I may be getting ahead of myself because we still got a lot to go in the year, but I, I I think this is going to be crowned as that, at least for right now. My thoughts might change if a company just surprises us and throws like a mini iPhone, for example, like Apple throws like a mini iPhone 16. That would be awesome. Then that would take the crown as the best compact mini flagship smartphone. But until then, I think this is it. And I, I think you will really enjoy it. Most people do. I have a friend of mine who uses the Galaxy S23. He's really happy with it. And he saw, I mean, obviously S23, S24. He didn't really see the need to upgrade, uh, but he said he loves the compact uh, form factor of his S23. I can easily recommend this. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, be sure to superman the like button, comment down below, and best of all, share this video because it really does help out the channel a lot. And will help push my content out to more people. Don't forget to check out this case from Banks. Absolutely recommend this case. I've been using it since day one, and definitely be sure to check out my latest wallpaper pack it's called Urban Glow. It's my favorite one so far. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below. That's been it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.